Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 45 of our Project Architect 2 Let's Play series, uh, where today you might be able to tell what's happening to the Andrada, um, but I've uh, I've come down with a bad case of uh, radiation poisoning. It was a mistake. No explosions happen, at least. It was a dumb mistake on the Andrada's part. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get a uh, fission reactor going, get some nuclear waste generated and nuclear waste spilled in our world. If you're struggling to think of what to get someone for Christmas, you should get them a fridge and watch their face light up when they open it. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful day here in the world of the Andrada. Again, eternal day. It's never going to change. Um, where last episode we left off getting our fissile fuel production line set up, and it's working pretty good. Um, I did modify things a little bit. Um, I added on another chemical oxidizer for each of the sulfur and the yellow cake uranium, because again, like I said, that's our bottleneck uh, in the whole setup process is these two. So I modified it a little bit to allow for our um, modular router here to send power to these two specifically, um, and then these two machines down here. Uh, which is our crushing factory and our enriching factory, which are both now upgraded to ultimate tier. Uh, and then they have their exporter set up exporting the different requisite material. So they do their thing um, and they push into this modular router, which then has a distributor module with speed and stack upgrades that is sent to distribute to these. Uh, so the distributor module is handling the movement of items from there into the requisite machine. And then it processes and bada bing, bada boom, we have everything going. And then it's still imported on the back here. Outside of that, though, I didn't change anything else there. Uh, everything else is still working and we're getting fissile fuel. I'm, I'm curious to see if we're going to be able to keep up. Is Applied Energistics going to be able to handle this input and output um, at speed? That's what I want to know. Uh, so what we need to do is start working on getting our reactor set up. As you can see here, I've already started um, in order to test that out. So I decided this series, why, I don't know, um, but I decided to go with a five by five uh, external platform or, or, or platform, which is going to give me a three by three internal. And then I went nine high, which is going to give me a seven on the inside. And it's the inside of a reactor that matters, right? Not necessarily the outside. And um, this is reactor casings. We're going to need re fission fuel assemblies. These guys are going to chill up and they're going to go all the way up to uh here then we're going to have a control now yeah, do we, we have a control rod and the glass on top of it uh so we can go ahead and shift right click this and we want these to be in a every other spot pattern so like so and like so and when i made these i planned for having way more because i was thinking of a five by five internal space not a five by five total space do i have enough fission reactor casings i might maybe we'll expand this out one more for each of these um this is going to be a pain to do though because i did that let's disconnect the pillars from the reactor then i should be able to uh vein mine all of those there we go and now we can actually go ahead and expand it. So let's go ahead and do this and we'll do something like that and expand this out by one. And if I have to make more of these casings, I will not that big of a deal. Bam. So now we can go up. So that's one, two, uh, you know what? Let's just manually do this so that I don't miscount. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and then we should be able to do this 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 hopefully this this and that ah and we ended up with just enough perfect so then i can go ahead and do the same thing here but we can go ahead and expand this a little bit i mean obviously bigger reactor faster you'll be able to do stuff more stuff you're able to produce and uh better better for you right so this goes here this goes here, that goes there, and we're missing some over here, here, and there. So now we should have a checkerboard. Good. And that's what I accounted for, and that should use almost all of the fission fuel assemblies that we had. I didn't account 100% because it's mathing in the Andrada. I mean, 
Uh, that's what I missed. I missed these edges. I planned for one, two, three, one, two, one, forgetting that there's going to be edges over here. So we're actually going to need two more control rods because <clears throat> there should be 13 total. So that's going to go there, 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 and then two more. One will go here and here. And then the rest of this can be filled in with this nice, beautiful, lovely reactor glass. And that should, in theory, once I get this fully enclosed, be a valid mechanism reactor. It's really not that complicated to make one of these things. The complicated part is making it so it doesn't explode on you and absolutely irradiate your entire area and destroy uh, everything. And since we're chunk loaded, it's even worse because it can't destroy anything. And so the radiation is just going to sit there and do nothing, which is great. OK, what did I do wrong? This should have validated itself. Um, it, it should yell at me that I don't have the things that I need. Are these supposed to come up to the top level? I don't think so. I must have some mistake going on somewhere in here. Is it is the size not going to work? Can it not be that tall? I've never thought there was a restriction before. That's the fuel rod assembly. And that's the fission fuel assembly. Yeah, that's that's what I need, right? There it goes. Hmm, weird. I didn't get the particle effects that first time. Ah, you know what? It was because we used building gadgets to build it, and uh, it, it can be kind of funky with tile entities sometimes. And so since building gadgets placed that last block, it really didn't like that. So um, it didn't you know, complete, but manually going back through and doing it did. OK, so cool. We have our reactor set up. It's currently obviously disabled, so nothing is happening. This is the, the GUI for it. And we can click the activate button, but nothing's going to happen because we got nothing in there. Um, if we go inside of here, we can adjust how much fuel it's going to burn. We're going to leave it at default right now until we get in. Now, normally your process would be to get your reactor and have it push into a turbine. It's going to generate steam to push into a turbine to gener spin the turbine to get energy. But we kind of don't need that. We don't need the energy. What we need is the waste. We need nuclear waste out of this guy. So how do we get it? Oh, well, first things first, we need to get some ports inside of here. We need access to our um, inputs and outputs. And I don't know why I put all of that stuff away. I need all of this stuff. I'm also going to need that. We're going to need some redstone dust. We're going to need from create a... Oh, I always forget the name of it. And they changed the name of it. It was a pulse repeater, but we need a pul oh, pulse repeater. That's it, right? Not the extender. I think we need the pulse repeater. Yeah. This is for our safety switch. I'm pretty sure it's a pulse repeater. We'll find out uh, when everything blows up. Okay, so we have a reactor port here and a reactor port here. Should validate again. And with our configurator, we can go ahead and smack this. And we're going to say we want to input on this one. And on this one, we can output the waste. OK, out input water, output waste. Uh, now for the water, we're going to handle it with mechanism. We're not going to use applied energistics because it's going to use a ton of water. And I want to make sure that we are able to move water um, as fast as we absolutely can uh, and basically um, instantly with integrated dynamics. So we're going to go ahead and get this set up. So we're going to need a fluid exporter is going to sit here. A fluid interface is going to attach this sink to the network. We come on over here and we say export fluids and it should start filling up with water. Not very fast right now, though. Um, and we've done this before, so there shouldn't be anything crazy. But we come in here to our fluid transfer rate. And I think it's nine nines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more invalidates it. Yep. OK, so now we're transferring at one, two, three, four, five, six, nine hundred and ninety nine million, nine hundred ninety nine thousand, nine hundred and ninety nine. Um, millibuckets per tick, I guess. I don't know, but it instantly fills up our reactor. That's what it is. Uh, let's look at the... Apparently, rain is going to be an issue because we don't have a weather control over here. I wonder if the there's the Draconic Celestial Manipulator, and this is able to control weather, right? Can I get this now? Sidebar. Celestial manipulator. I know it can control day, and we've used it for that purpose in the past, but I want clear skies. Uh, we want to make sure that we always have clear skies. So let's get a flux point. Place that over here. 
and we'll call this um, Celestial Manipulator Output, and then Clear Skies. So I can hear it doing it. There it goes. And that sound effect is absolutely crazy. Do not like that. Hopefully that clears the skies. Usually how this works is it causes it a new day to cycle. So it becomes night and then comes back to daytime. I don't know if it's going to work since we're in an eternal day dimension. It kind of sort of seems like it's not. It kind of looks like it doesn't. Um, but we'll find out rain sensor go ahead and then you are configured on redstone you will set it to clear skies and no i just want clear skies but i don't think it's working yeah i guess that's a flaw of having an eternal day dimension i'm just gonna have to wait for it to stop raining or question let's pop back home it was mentioned in the comments last time is it snowing at home? And is that why it's maybe because it's snowing here? Let's grab ourselves another sidebar on the episode and apologies for that. But I kind of want to see if we can get this rain thing solved. Uh, rain sensor. This should be able to sense snow too, right? It should just sense weather effects. Or is there a snow sensor? Okay, yeah, there's no snow sensor. Sensor point, a flux point. And let's set this up over here. Sure, right here is fine. We can go ahead and get the rain sensor. Is that going to trigger? Yes, okay, so it does trigger on, on um, snow. Let's grab the flux point. Celestial manipulator two. Maybe because it's here that it's doing this. We want clear skies and we want to configure redstone to be on clear skies. So when you get a redstone signal, clears the skies. So it's charging up and then it does the thing and you're going to see it's going to turn it to daytime. It went up and exploded, but the sun should. There it goes. Oh, and it didn't turn it to daytime. I thought that's I swear that's how it worked in all the mods nine. When I did this, it turned it into daytime and it just cycled a new day. Well, it did fix the rain over here, though. So maybe those two are tied together. Overworld, if it's raining, it's going to rain here. Either way, it stopped raining here. I don't know if it was because of this eventually did its thing or the one at home, but no more rain. And that's what I want. OK, so we have our water inside of here. We have our waste. We're also going to need to get our inputs, which is going to be our um, fissile fuel. So we're going to grab another port and we're going to place it here. We're going to grab an export bus with acceleration cards on it. I did look, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way, we can um, access our um, mechanism gases in here. We have to change this to show all. It's not a fluid and it's not an item, so it kind of falls under all. But now if I look at fissile fuel, you'll see we have five, almost 5,000 buckets, 4,500 buckets. Um, I don't like being on all though, because I don't want all of that water. I mean, I guess it, at this point, it doesn't really matter, right? Seeing our liquids mixed in here. Eh, it doesn't really make a difference because we have 2 billion of everything. So our numbers are all way off anyway. Export bus. Cable. I mean, I might as well run that over so that it looks neat. Fissile fuel. Export it and do it fast. Okay. So now, in theory, our reactor should have everything it needs. I'm worried about that fissile fuel. I don't know. I mean, granted, right now we're at a 0 0.1 millibuckets per tick so it's going to handle it but going forward we'll see what happens so theoretically now we should be able to activate this right it should be good to go and start doing its thing however before we activate it we definitely want to get ourselves a safety switch set up one two three four hmm and i didn't make this large enough for a proper sized safety switch Let's see what happens. Okay, so generally you want to have all uh, enough reactor points for everything. Well, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do our three here. 
and then one more and these are logic adapters okay and what these guys do is um well they have logic they control how uh, things inside of the reactor let's grab ourselves some stone or something just to use and i'm going to go ahead and i need to place something here and we're going to run out and we're going to run over here uh, and having a block here is perfectly fine we're going to need our pulse repeater to chill out here uh, i don't think that that necessarily needs to be on any sort of interval i think it should be okay uh, redstone dust to connect to each of these and bam okay so what we want to do is come into the in, uh, the UI for these, and we want these to activate when we get to high temperature, okay? We want it to be, if the temperature gets too hot, you turn on. Over here, if we have critical damage. Now, if the temperature is too hot, we should have critical damage, so we can probably skip that, because there's four of them, and we kind of only need, we only have room for three right now, because we need to have the, you know, gap there. Um. We want this one to be insufficient fuel. And then you are going to be activation. OK, so what should happen is if we get to high temperature, it's going to kick a redstone signal on, bam, push it into there, shut the machine off. If we have excess waste, too much waste in here, shut the machine off. If we have insufficient fuel, shut the machine off. Then again, if the damage goes critical, that means we should be at a high temperature. So I feel like that's slightly redundant. Um, now, can I replace? Here's a question. I think this has to be um, casings on the edges here. Yeah, it does. That's what I thought. So we can't replace that. So we'll live. We'll survive. I hope. The Andrada says. Um, but anyway, with all of that being done, we should now be able to go and head and activate this very, very loud machine. We're going to go ahead and absolutely. Um, change the volume on that now i don't necessarily like to turn it all the way off i do like to hear the reactor to know that it's running it's just it by default it's extremely loud okay uh, so what we have going on over here is we have heat or we have steam and we also have nuclear waste building up we do need to get rid of the steam i forgot about the steam so let's go ahead and do this now with the steam we should be able to go ahead and get ourselves a trash can and i don't remember which one i think Honestly, isn't there like a gas trash can? Mm. Well, one of these should work, but we'll grab an ultimate trash can just to be safe. Uh, we're going to grab one more fission reactor port. We'll place this one up here. That should work. We can go here and we're going to output coolant. And then that can go into the ultimate trash can. And then hopefully that exports all of the steam we don't need steam we're not utilizing the steam so we don't need it to be in the system at all what we need is the waste what i would like to do is take a look at fissile fuel and see do we have a gain which it does look like we do granted remember we're only at a 0.1 millibucket burn rate so we need to check and make sure that we're able to keep up going forward but for now i think that's okay all right so let's go ahead and clean up inventory so now what do we do? Well, we have our waste that we need to process, right? This is generating nuclear waste, and that's what we're here for. We want nuclear waste. So that nuclear waste is going to come out and get processed, processed, processed in two machines, right? Nuclear waste. We're going to have a, um, sorry, usage. We're going to put it into an isotopic centrifuge to get us plutonium. And then we're going to put it in a solar neutron activator to get polonium okay and both of those are going to be used to create plutonium pellets or polonium pellets okay with water and then we'll end up ultimately with spent nuclear waste and the spent nuclear waste is bad we need to get rid of that we'll take care of that what are you nuclear bomb what kind of want to know what that does maybe later um, <laughs> it sounds interesting. So what we need to do is get this going. Now, in order to make the um, polonium that we're going to need for this, I am going to require HDPE. So we're going to have to get HDPE set up um, and get ethylene going. It's a very simple process, something we can crank out very quick. Uh, 
not too complicated to do next episode. But for now, let's get ourselves our isotopic centrifuge. So the isotopic centrifuge can go ahead and chill out. We'll put this guy over here. Now there is gonna be a process. We do have to get them uh, processed inside of a PRC. So they're gonna come from here and it's gonna push into a PRC. That's my goal here, right? So with that, we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some ultimate gas cables, whatever they're called, pressurized tubes. And those are gonna be able to handle the outputs and we should see nuclear waste come into here. I do wanna mention that applied mechanistics does not allow radioactive materials to go into your applied energistic system. So we can't import the nuclear waste into our applied energistic system. As far as I understand, I'm pretty sure that's correct. I could be wrong. We could test it out. I mean, I'm about to waste 300. Can you? There we go. Give me that. Okay. Ah, and I just irradiated my area because that had, um, what's it called in there, which is great. Mm, so I need a Geiger counter. They didn't think about that. Let's see how long it's going to take to get rid of this nuclear waste. I mean, the radiation. Honestly, we'll survive. It's not that big of a deal, but... Time to decay, seven hours and 10 minutes. That's lovely. Uh, are there scrubbers? No, we kind of just have to let it tick and do its thing on its own. So it's gonna be like this for a while. That's fantastic. It's not what I wanted to have happen. Okay, well, just ignore the uh, annoying because I made a mistake. Anyway, let's go ahead and get a import bus and see if we can import this. I should have a uh, cardboard boxed or something that or just literally not done anything or just imported straight from that pipe, I guess. Luckily, we're invincible. Um, let's grab ourselves. It's very annoying, though. Let's grab ourselves a cable. Hook that up. And are you able to import this? No, as expected, we are not able to import. So I literally did this for absolutely nothing. It's what I thought was gonna happen in the first place. Now that is getting really annoying. Okay, let's get this done quick so I can figure this part out. Okay, so what we're gonna have happen is the um, nuclear waste is gonna come over here into the isotopic centrifuge uh, and it should start filling up. Let me set this guy on the right is going to be the input okay we're going to clear this items are not coming in from anywhere gases is going to be input on the right there we go nuclear waste in here we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a flux point I'm trying to go fast i know this is very annoying because it's annoying me too we're going to grab a flux point we'll place that on top give it power um can you take power from the top you can't you're a butthead um We'll get power in from the bottom then. This is our plutonium process, and we'll hook up other cables to this to get uh, the rest of the power going. So that's plutonium, and we have plutonium, okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We're gonna output this to the front, um, but I can't handle this ticking anymore, and I have to wait seven hours at this point. I mean, the farther away I go, the less irradiated it is, obviously. Is there? I mean, I could wear the radiation suit, I guess. And that would stop it. Right? I, I think I'm pretty sure I have one. No, okay, I guess I don't. I used it for something then. Uh, anyway, we'll come back and fix this next episode. It's fine. We'll let this run for a little while and generate the stuff that we need. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the burn rate and we'll go ahead and change that to one millibucket per tick. Wow, we just 10 x our speed. But I want to just make sure that we're able to keep up with our fissile fuel. So I'll play with those levels until we get to the point where we can. Um, and then our plutonium is going to generate much, much faster as we keep going. So anyway, uh, if you enjoyed today's episode and my stuffering here apparently uh please feel free to like comment subscribe i do appreciate it it really does help out the channel thanks for stopping by thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one have a good one. Oh my god i'm just trying to die here guys all i need to do is die but i'm too over op i keep surviving but this stuff won't go away until i die see you next episode